Hi, uh, I'm John Dudley. I work in a CNRS laboratory in France. Uh, I do research in ultrafast and nonlinear optics. And I also uh, have, for the last four years, uh, driven a project along with many others to get the United Nations to declare the year 2015 an international year of light. In December 2013, uh, that was just last year, we uh, had the successful proclamation by the General Assembly of the United Nations, uh, which capped off uh, four years of hard work from many, many partners. The whole idea of having a, an entire year focused on the theme of light and photonics and light-based technologies dates back to 2009, just before LaserFest. As we were gearing up with SPIE and all the other partners to develop ideas to promote lasers during 2010, we realised that there was an amazing possibility to do something even bigger if we had a bit more time. And this was the idea of having an official mandate from the UN to talk about light and photonics in its broadest possible sense, not just amongst ourselves as scientists, but to society at large. And the only way you can do that effectively and bring in all the different partners from, from school kids to politicians at the highest level is with the endorsement of the United Nations itself. So this is, this, this is what's motivated us for the last four years to work through all the different committees and stages and to provide all the material so that we could achieve this goal. Now, you might ask, why do we go to so much trouble when we understand why light and photonics are so important? Well, although we understand why it's so important, we live in a little bit of a bubble, really, because outside the confines of scientists, very few people actually understand what photonics is. Now, everyone uses a smartphone, but probably only 0.1% of the population really appreciate what happens when you tap in a few words, send an email, that microwave signal is transmitted to a cell tower, it's then converted uh, uh, into a uh, modulated laser beam, transmitted into an optical fibre, and propagates under the ocean from uh, New York to Europe. Now all that involves all sorts of, of technologies and light in its broadest sense from the microwave part of the electromagnetic spectrum to the optical part when light is trapped and guided in a fibre. Now we understand that. Sometimes we don't appreciate just how miraculous it all is and how it works seamlessly, but the public, they don't really understand that at all. And I think that's our fault. I think that we've been so busy actually developing these technologies that we've forgotten the importance of actually explaining what we do clearly and carefully to the people who use the technology. It's also important, I think, for us to uh, communicate upwards. And what I mean by that is we have to establish clearer lines of uh, communication with the politicians and the funding agencies that, that actually allow us to do our, our research by investing in resources and people to do the science that we need to in order to develop the technologies for tomorrow. One of the lessons I learned in working through all the committee stages of the UN was just how poorly scientists in general communicate with the political layer of, of decision makers. We are often convinced that one good argument that is technically correct is enough to sell an idea. And that is absolutely not the case. You need to, to realise that politicians function like the old-fashioned analogue radar. They sweep around a circle like that and every person who sees them in a day is just a five-minute blip. And we are competing with lots of other people from the life sciences, from medicine, from environment, from culture and education for their attention. It's not enough just to tell them uh, uh, that, that photonics and light science is important uh, and just expect them 
to understand that immediately we have to repeatedly and with passion and commitment explain to them why it's important, why it's important for their lives, why it's important for the lives of all of our society, why it's important for the lives of their constituents, if they're politicians, and, and why it's important for, for tomorrow. There are all sorts of, of issues involved and they're very complex, but at the end of the day, we have some real problems that need real solutions. Amongst these are the fact that in the equatorial uh, zones of, of, of our planet, often children simply cannot do homework at all. The, the, the concept of working at home on material that one has studied during the day doesn't exist because there's no light at home. And so one of our core programs will be something that we're calling study after sunset. The idea will be to develop a portable uh, off-grid lighting solutions uh, and to uh, explore and see if they can be deployed as widely as possible uh, during 2015. Now of course many of these initiatives already exist through uh, UNESCO programs and charities and, and some companies, but I think that the International Year will give us uh, a means to alert the world to this problem. It's a very important problem. Education is a key to all sorts of things. It's a key to personal well-being, it's a key to political stability, and I think that this International Year focusing on light and light science is one very important way that we can ensure that education in these areas is, uh, a, uh, is a priority for 2015. We will only get this chance once. There will not be a second International Year of Light. So we absolutely have to seize this chance and all work together, all researchers, all professional societies, all academies, all members of the public who are enthused by science and technology to spread the message of how important light science is for the future of society and for the future of this planet.